Sorry, the alien limb syndrome has gotten nothing to do with aliens. It is a rare neurological condition in which a person's limb, usually an arm, acts on its own, doing its own thing without the person having any conscious control over it. Anyone who has seen Dr. Strangelove will know exactly what it looks like, but all sorts of movements can occur besides dodgy salutes. Because it is so rare, not all doctors know about it, and because the movements can be so strange, patients sometimes end up being referred to psychiatrists. The first description was in 1908 by German psychiatrist Kurt Goldstein, who reported the case of a 57-year-old woman who had had a stroke affecting her left side. But as she recovered, her arm acted as if it belonged to another person. She complained of a feeling of strangeness in her hand and insisted that someone else was moving it. When her left hand grasped an object, she could not voluntarily release it, and it made spontaneous movements on its own, such as wiping her face and rubbing her eyes. With a huge effort, she was able to move her left arm voluntarily, but conscious movements were much slower and less precise than similar involuntary movements. As there were no scans in those days, they had to wait to carry out a post-mortem examination to find out which parts of her brain had been affected. And this showed areas of infarction or strokes in the right hemisphere and corpus callosum, shown here in red. Other terms used over the next few years were diagonistic dyspraxia and magnetic apraxia. In 1972, French neurologists Brion and Jednac used the term signe de la main étrangère, or the foreign hand sign, which was later translated as alien hand. People can be affected in different ways depending on which part of the brain has been damaged, and there are at least three different variants of alien limb syndrome. The colossal variant occurs in people who have sustained damage to the corpus callosum, the part of the brain that connects the two hemispheres by means of 300 million nerve fibres or axons. Its function can be impaired by a tumour, infection or stroke, and in the past by a surgical operation in cases of very severe epilepsy to prevent seizures spreading from one side of the brain to the other. The corpus callosum is a complex structure with significant differences between men and women, and damage to different areas results in different symptoms. One patient noticed that her left hand suddenly started to live a life of its own, unbuttoning her blouse, trying to choke her while asleep, and fighting with the right hand to answer the phone. She had to physically restrain the wayward hand with her good hand to prevent it injuring her. Patients often describe the alien hand as feeling strange or not their own. Sometimes they are very much aware of it doing its own thing, but some patients don't seem to notice at all, almost as if they are blind to it. Some people give the alien hand a name. Cheeky and Monster from the Moon are two examples, but my favourite is the woman who named her mischievous hand Baby Joseph. And whenever the hand engaged in playful, troublesome activities, such as pinching her nipples, she would laugh and tell it to stop being naughty. The movements can be very complex and result in what is called intermanual conflict, in which the hands are working at cross purposes. An example of this was a woman who put a cigarette in her mouth with her intact hand only for it to be pulled out and thrown away by the other. Another patient was observed to be buttoning up his shirt with his controlled dominant hand while the alien hand at the same time was unbuttoning it. The frontal variant of the syndrome occurs when there has been damage to one of the frontal lobes, resulting in impulsive groping and grasping, compulsive fiddling with objects and difficulty releasing objects when grasped. The patient is aware that the arm belongs to them but is unable to voluntarily stop movements and sometimes they end up trying to restrain the limb by sitting on it or holding it between their legs. Sometimes the difficulty releasing grasped objects can be so severe that the more the patient tries to let go of the object, the more the grip tightens. So the only way to release the grip is to peel off the fingers one by one with a good hand. Other patients are able to release things by making a conscious, focused effort, but as soon as they are distracted, the behaviour starts again. Sometimes the affected hand is so anarchic it repeatedly scratches part of the body, so that protective pads have to be worn. In another case, a man reported the normal difficulties of the alien hand reaching out and grasping objects nearby, 
plus his hand taking hold of his penis and engaging in public masturbation. A distinct posterior variant of alien limb syndrome is associated with damage to the parietal and occipital lobes of the brain. The movements here generally involve pulling the hand away from something, often by levitating upwards through the activation of anti-gravity muscles. Is this what Dr. Strangelove had? Alien limb syndrome occurs when the two sides of a person's brain become disconnected, and patients presenting with these unusual symptoms are investigated to find which part of the brain has been affected and by what condition. However, even with the benefit of all the latest high-resolution brain imaging techniques, we still can't fully explain all of the complex behaviours that can occur. One theory is that the alien behaviour that is not accompanied by a sense of agency is the result of activity in the primary motor cortex acting independently of the normal pre-motor cortex influences. Fortunately, it is rare. A study at the Mayo Clinic managed to identify 150 cases over 15 years. As alien limb syndrome is due to damaged brain tissue, there is no cure for it. But there are a number of treatments that can improve symptoms and quality of life. These include medication such as clonazepam, botulinum toxin to paralyse muscles of the affected limb, visuospatial coaching techniques such as mirror box therapy where the patient moves their normal limb in front of a mirror and hides the alien hand from view or trying to distract the affected hand by giving it another task to do, for example, holding a walking stick. Other techniques that have been found to work include putting a glove on, giving it verbal commands, putting it in warm water, wedging it between the legs, or, when all else fails, slapping it. Cases caused by stroke have the best long-term prognosis, but rehabilitation is often very slow and can take up to two years. Despite its prominent appearance in Stanley Kubrick's 1964 film with Peter Sellers, attempts to change the name of the condition to Dr. Strangelove Syndrome have not been successful. It also made a memorable appearance in an episode of House.